<clears throat> In studio with us right now, Charlie Sheen. Charlie, how are you? How was the weekend? <laughs> Winning. <laughs> Scott, Scott Wolf uh, of ABC's V um, and, and a dear friend. Uh, Wolf, are you following Sheen? I am, I have to say. I am following Sheen on, uh, on the Twitter. I am following Sheen on all of my new me- media outlets. Uh, it's, it's hard to look away from. I mean, you know, say what you want. It's, it's incredibly interesting. The general it's... unraveling. Have you, I mean, is, have you just, do you look at it like, wow, accident on the, on the side of the freeway? Do you look at it like, God, this is entertaining? Or like, I hope nothing bad happens? Whoa. I have to say, I have a tiny, I, I have a slightly bit of unique perspective on it because I worked with the guy. Uh, I did Spin City, uh, I don't know, you know, whatever that was, seven, eight years ago, nine years ago. I'm like 86 now, I forget. <laughs> what, <laughs> what day bo- is The it? Botox is holding. Uh, and I did Spin City with him, and the loveliest guy, generous, and he was at, the, you know, he was having, uh, he was at a, a, a really good point in his life, and... Um, but but uh, he would maintain it was a bad point in his life. Like he was sober at this time, right? Yeah, he was going to meetings and he was clean. It seems as though he would f- characterize that as being a, a period of his life where maybe he was not being his true self. I can say, you know, from having spent some of that time with him, I thought he was a really great, really generous, really funny. And the really outward kind. effects were were good Amazing. on you, right? I came away thinking that was a that's a cool guy. That was a great guy. And he, you know, I'm a, I'm a guest at his Christmas dinner, a guest star on their show. You know, that's how it is when you come into somebody's show. And they s- set the tone for you. And he was incredibly welcoming. He was great. So when I first started seeing all of this, yeah, it was, there was a little bit of a, a tinge of, ah, that doesn't look like the guy that I remember. But, um, but hey, you know, uh, <clears throat> it's, um, it is... You know, I think you look at his family sometimes talk talk about him. You know, I think yeah. you you see his dad and his brother, and you know, I think if if I were ever in some kind of you know tailspin of some kind or weird place, I think my brothers would be the guys to talk to and sure. see how am I doing. And 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 uh, I wish the guy well. Like I said, I, I feel like my experience. I came away thinking that guy was really cool to me and generous to me and funny and and kind. And I know that guy's there, so uh, regardless of what's going on with him today, I, I do wish him well. And he gave you a parting gift, didn't he, when you were working on Spin City? He did. He, uh, I, I was uh, off to do this little independent film at the time, and I was playing a detective. I was playing a, a guy who wanted to be a forensics uh, guy in the FBI. And he was really interested in all that stuff, and we had a great conversation with him uh, about it. And, and completely unsolicited, he showed up the next day at work with this book that he had went and got for me and said, hey, this is you know, what we were talking about. I think if you read this, this would be really, uh, really um, good for your character and your understanding of things. And I was like, well, who is this guy? Who does this? That was a very thoughtful it thing to really do. Great. It was really great. So, uh, it's fair to say back then, sounds to me like the guy was winning. <laughs> That's right. I'm not so sure this is, an, this is a, a resounding victory, what we're witnessing right now. Yeah, I, I just don't know. Uh, yeah, what can you say? What's your two cents here? You've, you've now sat down. I'm with the, the, I, on my, interview was, my interview was less interview and more counsel. I sat for 90 minutes on the guy's couch in his home and literally told him, here's what you need to do. Yeah, but do you come away feeling like he is, he, there, there is, uh, he's intact, he is being who he is, or is there something... What, what, what do you? Th- what do he you th- is appealing to his most guttural self, right? Because underneath it all, there's a very angry person there. He's a, 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 he, he is anti institution. He is anti uh, anti government. Yeah. He's anti authority. Yeah. He's anti all these anti. He's all the antis that you need that you don't want to be. He's all the antis. Yeah. And uh, and I think he, I would call him like an extreme libertarian. You know what I mean? Sure. Any kind of constraint or structure to to fit in, he doesn't. He's he seems to feel like he's given himself away for, yes. for some time now, and he's uh, out, uh, with a vengeance, wanting to write that. Wrong, but what a but brilliant man! The U stream he did this guy. weekend was a disaster, and I think he, he he may have more respect for the writers on Two and a Half Men now because <laughs> those guys give him great. He can nail the material. <laughs> I didn't see. The, I, just, I didn't see the home. Uh, the the Wayne's you missed World nothing, thing. Wolf. Was you it, missed nothing. It was. It was. It was Regrettable. In fact, I love Charlie. The next day he sends out, that was treasonous to the movement last night. Awful. My bad. Moving forward. Great. Um, v is uh, on tomorrow night uh, mm-hmm. getting slapped in the face by a hot girl. Yes. What's going on here? Never, never a bad idea uh, to get paid for it. 
What did it feel like? Icing on the cake. Uh, it stung a bit. And uh, uh, she, you know, we had it. It's funny because on a show that is a big, giant, crazy uh, adventure about aliens landing on Earth and there's running and car chases and explosions. And I play the news guy who I've derived many things from you, the handsome right. at the forefront. Uh, I don't get to throw punches. I don't get to kick anything. I don't get no. to bl- And there's no explosions. So my one stunt for my time on V as Chad Decker is getting slapped in the face by a beautiful woman. There was a stunt coordinator on set who sort of walked us through it, and she did a great job. Is it a Hollywood um, slap or is it a real slap? That was a real slap. It was a you, real did slap. you say, no, no, give me the real thing? I did. You know, I, yeah, because she, she gave me a couple of, like, I'm scared to hit you slaps. And especially on, on my coverage, you know, where they're shooting me, you know, you want really to have something to react to. So... um so I said, go for it. Really go. And she, and she was sort of squeamish and like, I didn't want to, I didn't really want to hit you hard. And I no. said, go for it. Do. Hit. Like, like, really let me have one. So uh, unfortunately, <laughs> the first slap after that conversation was more of a punch, frankly. It was like a thud from oh, the no. palm. It was like, and she hit me right on the oh. jaw. And you could hear everyone in the, everyone in the <laughs> room was like, oh, good. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> And I saw stars for a second, and I actually had the thought go through my mind, I might have just got knocked out by a lady on camera. <laughs> <laughs> and I shook it off, and I said, just, like, just stay on your feet, stay on your feet. <laughs> and I think it's the take they wind up using. She, if you watch this thing, uh, it oh. like almost dislocates my neck. She spins <laughs> my head around. It is unbelievable, but it was it was actually. But really you stay in character, and you motor right through the fighting. scene. Keep going. Tiger blood. My God, that's so strong. <laughs> I love it. And she is a hottie. What's her name? Uh, Anna Grauer is the actress. And, Anna Grauer. Uh, yeah. She is no uh, frail flower. She knocked me good. And she's beautiful, and she was incredible in the show. Uh, uh, but, yeah, the, the story in V for, you know, Ch- the beauty of Chad for me, hopefully for the folks who are watching it, is that he's this gray area. You know, you, don't, you just don't know. Whether he's this, morally ambiguous. It's morally a great ambiguous. Term. We can't, can we trust him? He says he's on the good side now. He says he's fighting against the visitors and Anna. But uh, he seems like he's always kind of got one foot out the door. And in this story with this— I think he's the only guy that can save us. Thank you. I actually, from, from day one, there, th- this has been something that's been floated out there, which is that he's this kind of— uh, He'll uh, put down his own Kool-Aid, and he'll, he'll save us all. I think so. I think to, to have the guy who is most vulnerable and potentially the most dangerous when the, sh- when the story begins wind up being the guy that actually rises up and saves the day— it's good storytelling. That's appealing. Yeah. I, I got to make a phone call. To would, you rather, would you rather <laughs> lock into a deep makeout with an attractive opposite uh, actress uh, or um, get slapped in the face by an equally hot actress? The slap of the kiss. The slap of the kiss. I suppose the combo package is just like... <laughs> it's out of the question. You can't have both. <laughs> oh, you can't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> after my, my... Although, that would be... Have you ever had a combo? Slap into kiss? I've never, I've never. But when I've seen it, it's very, it's, it looks, it's remarkable because it's the like, it's the attraction, and then ah, no. But uh, I, f- I feel like I would go for the kiss, especially in light of my neck is still sore from <laughs> shooting that scene. She <laughs> almost killed me, Billy. So I, I'm gonna go for the kiss next time. Oh, that's if it's good. Offered. Uh, Stad, tell me about the. I, 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 I slipped Stad. in. I call him Stad because he calls me Stad. So we've we've done this for a while, and you you began it. You this, be, you uh, once sent me an email and you said Bushenstad. Dar Bushenstad. Dar Bushenstad, and then you went on to, with your. And I said, yes. where the hell did that? Where did that come from? I don't know. I mean, I was it was Professor Bush. It was uh, 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 Doctor Bush. Dar Bushenstad. <laughs> Governor Bushy. It, it was all kinds going. of different things. But the the Stad has. Sh- Stuck, and I've were. only put it back in your face, so it's interchangeable now. That's good. Uh, your your wife, you, you left the boy, mm-hmm. and you and your wife went to well, not not they came back to him, but you and your wife yeah, we went to Senegal him. for malaria no more. Well, explain this trip and how does this happen? A trip from you know Park City, Utah, to Senegal. So, the West Coast of Africa. Uh, you know, one of the things that I love most about my wife is that she, um, she's she got a gigantic heart. And um, from day one, we instead of taking gifts for our wedding, we actually had people give us donations, give us money. And we had met through both of us participating in a pediatric AIDS foundation years ago. And so we actually took all the money that people gave us for our wedding. We went to South Africa, and we actually handed it off in person to – uh, different organizations that were benefiting from the work this uh, this pediatric AIDS uh, group was doing. So from day one, that's been incredibly important to us is using the good fortune that we have and have had 
and um, and looking around and seeing where there's need and where somebody needs help or a voice and and participating. So um, most recently, we became aware of what's going on with uh, the current state of malaria in Africa. I mean, this is a disease that's thousands of years old, but uh, it's one of those things where I think if most people just hear the numbers, literally every 45 seconds, a kid dies in Africa from malaria. Malaria is is preventable. It's treatable. 45 seconds? Every 45 seconds. Uh, uh, you know, literally, in the time that we'll sit here, you know, 10 kids in Africa die from this disease. And it's and in this day and age, it's so preventable. Literally, th- there's incredible work being done by, by groups like Malaria No More. Um, uh, the You know, the President's Malaria Initiative and the Global Fund. And our country is way out front. And, yeah. And so we got a chance to go to Senegal, and Senegal is a place where malaria was awful. It was it was endemic. Peop, you know, the the numbers of the mortality rate was incredibly high, and thanks to the work that's being done, and it's simple, simple, cheap things. It's mosquito nets over a kid's bed. It's a mosquito net over a pregnant woman's bed. The most vulnerable people are are the children and the pregnant women. Um, and since 2000, f- from 2005 to 2008, these very, very, very simple programs have dropped the mortality rate 30 percent in a country like Senegal. And so a disease that's thousands of years old that was worldwide, but countries that were developed and able to afford to eradicate it themselves have. Um, a country like Senegal and many countries throughout Africa just don't have the resources. But that money, especially thanks to the United States government is and all of us taxpayers, that aid is headed in that direction. And to see firsthand, we went to Senegal, went to Dakar, visited families in their homes. What did you see? What's the most like a jarring visual or the most Im- impactful visual? I suppose there were two. The, the first thing was... Um, actually going into neighborhoods and people would ask us to come into their homes and see and they a lot of them had these nets up and they would tell you firsthand their kids were standing right there these kids would tell you how they were sick last year how they had a sibling who died last year but now these nets are here and they're not getting malaria it's a very simple fit and um i suppose the second thing was we went to a school it was an elementary school and this is the the, the to me the most incredible thing is you know you travel to a place like this and I think the first thing you see when you hop off the plane is, wow, this is different. That's different. I, I, you know, the, the, the scenery is different. The people are different in this way, blah, 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 blah. And really, for me, after about a half hour, I start to see all the things that are the same. And, and that was never more true than this elementary school we went to. And these incredible kids, and they, they put on this play for us about a kid getting malaria and having to go to his parent and being and getting sick and then getting help from the United States and getting better. And it was a malaria club at, at this uh, school in just outside of Dakar. And so the awareness that's being created, the fact that these people so want to help themselves and see the help we're offering them and are so appreciative. I would encourage anybody <clears throat> to go to um, – uh, Malaria No More's website and uh, Malaria No More dot org dot org and learn more about the work they're doing and uh, and and what's at stake and how you can contribute and and this is the kind of thing. Look, there are a lot of problems uh, in the world, uh, unfortunately, and there are so many where you look at it and you just think, I just don't know where the solution is. This is one where this organization yeah. has set to end malaria deaths in Africa by 2015. They know exactly how to do it. It's just a matter of keeping up the fight. So. Uh, yeah. Well, as we always do with uh, the guests that we love, we uh, the Billy Bush Show will make a donation to malaria no more dot uh, org. Uh, this is fantastic. In honor of the great you, uh, Wolf in his time. Thank you so much. We love I you. Appreciate it. We love you. Good man. Awesome.